How are you today? I can see you are fine. Not just fine, you are very, very, very fine. May the name of the Lord be praised forever. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seat. I come to you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, His holy name. And this is a very wonderful day. Today I just want to talk about a very small episode that has really interfered about the church. The entire church, the entire body of Christ has a problem because of this simple condition. Now I know before I start talking about this, uh, the division in the body of Christ, division in the church generally. Now, before I nail it on that spot, I want to just uh, make it a, a knowledge for so many people. Uh, people like gossips. <laughs> yeah, people like gossips because if we do a gossiping episode, kind of, not really gossiping, but it's something that is talking about people or talking about someone uh, people tend not to have interest in viewing. So sometimes we want people to see what we are saying and participate in what we are talking about now. And this episode today, I want to talk specifically about the division in the body of Christ. The division. Why the good people called genuinely or not even good people called genuinely, the people who serve God on a genuine course experience a lot of opposition and a lot of differences from different people. Uh, let me put it in my layman's language that uh, genuine prophets really suffer persecution in the hands of the false prophets. And at the same time, what makes it look very weird is that the false prophets now takes a position where they are the ones that look as if they are the genuine prophets. I know you understand what I'm talking about up to that place. And in the later part of it, I will mention uh, names, <clears throat> possibly of uh, some few uh, ministries or rather uh, organizations. And uh, if possible, I may mention some few names in regard to this not on the bad note but on the good note but even if i mention any name on the bad note definitely it will be for all of us to learn something that is happening and we need to take attention about now the body of christ is far more divided and i can tell you not only in one country one nation not only in one continent generally the body of christ is divided and I will just pass through in brief several factors or a few that I will mention. Uh, why? Uh, factors that contribute towards the division. And uh, without wasting time, I will start by contributing uh, into this forum. Uh, you also go to the comment section and talk to us. What do you think causes the division in the body of Christ? and what contributes and facilitates it, what fuels it to the level, and uh, who is to blame. And uh, apart from who is to blame, what do you think we can do? Go to the comment section and give us answers of the three set of questions. What causes the division in church? According to how you've studied it. I know I'm asking this question because I know in this forum, in this channel, we have very, very advanced in wisdom, men of God and women of God who are in spirit, in fact, who are prophetically gifted into counseling or into giving wisdom to other people that passes through understanding to another generation, not only one or two. I know we are many in this channel. And that's why this channel is not a, a, a favorite for the young people or those others that say, they are forced or something like uh, kind of to be uh, around that area. Now, my very first study, I've come to understand my very first study, very first one, is the doctrinal differences. Now, 
we've come differently. Those who studied religion in school, or rather philosophy, or rather some uh, theology, to an extent, you know, there's a part of theology that you study so much about theology that you will think that there is no God. I'm not talking about that kind of theology. There is also misplaced theology. And uh, they also study it in different places. And this is one of the things that different theological studies and philosophical studies and uh, different study on biblical interpretation of which we call it dogma, different exegesis in the Bible, brings a different approach on how we can see God and the belief in this God that we can see. So this one, in the, we end up having different theories about who God is and different information and knowledge about the God we know. Some people end up knowing that there is a different heaven and some people also come in after studies, that is, after their theological differences and the doctrinal differences they possess in different ways from different schools whatsoever. Let me talk about schools in quote. Let me use that word. Allow me to use that word. They assume differences in the belief system they have. And so there is another belief system that comes in. I think this is where the Bible brings in the doctrinal difference where people of the Nicolaitan. Paul was talking about some people in the Bible, in the episodes of Paul, that there is a team and there is a group that has come up with different teachings. And they are Nicolaitan teachings. And Paul calls them the Nicolaitan teachings. The teachings that are out of the real, real uh, understanding and the message of the cross. Because the, Paul was saying, I, myself, I met Christ after his death and resurrection. And others would also ask, if you met Christ after death and resurrection, so what audacity or thoughts or authority would rather you can show us at this kind of time? And he say, no. You, you met Christ in his natural nature. But me, I met him in the glorified nature. Forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today, once again in our ministry, the synagogue church of all nations. We have the opportunity to express immense things to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has always given us his platform through which we keep glorifying his name. We talk of his mercy, we talk of God's favor and his love. Today is another day to celebrate. As you have all gathered here on this first Thanksgiving service in commemoration of the reopening of our ministry. So Paul was arguing his point in the book of Corinthians, first Corinthians and second, of course, the first book of Corinthians, he was talking to these Corinthians, trying to tell them why he is an apostle called, but not within the time frame of Jesus' life physically in the body. So he wants to prove a point to the, uh, the Corinthians who are also arguing in the point that who is Paul? talking to me, talking to us, the Corinthians, about Jesus Christ, and he was not there. And now Paul comes in and writes the first letter and gives his testimony to the Corinthians. And most of the other episodes were talking about the reference of the Holy Spirit and the understanding of the Holy Spirit. But to the Corinthians, they first denied that Jesus had no much handing over kind of association to Paul. So what they were thinking and anticipating was that 
Paul should keep quiet when apostles are mentioned. So he said, no, we have to get this thing right because I, I was apostle by the virtue of Christ's appointment when I met him on my way to Damascus to persecute the church. And that's exactly what took place. Now, I wanted to find out this. So in the beginning, Paul started by persecuting the church and in the end of the day, he realized, I'm a persecutor. I am a stumbling block to the body of Christ in general, not just one church, not just a believer. In fact, we didn't have the name of the church, of any church then. We only knew the disciples of Jesus, of which where they went in to a place called Antioch. And in Antioch, where they gathered, and uh, the, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, generally, I had talked, there's an episode I talked about the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was a group of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the teachers of the law. They gathered together and formed one organization of which if it is today, we will call it an umbrella body. And they formed one umbrella body called Sanhedrin. And then now gathered and they said, we want to finish these people and Christ himself. So they managed to kill Christ in the physical, not knowing that was the avenue for God's glorification. They were also working in their own doctrinal form because they believed Jesus will come, but they didn't know it is him that they are crucifying. So after a while, there was an outcry of division between these people, the Sanhedrins, who were very religious and they still believed in God and in their own way, they believed there is something happening within the spiritual realm. But then they didn't believe Jesus Christ was brought in to save mankind. They learned this way back after. In fact, it is us that is training, is trying to talk about this thing for them to understand. As we understood this thing before, we understood this thing earlier on, later on that is. And it was the doctrinal difference that made them to kill Jesus. Because Jesus came in with the gospel of God's kingdom on earth. And he said he was son of God sent from heaven and come in physical. But then they believe in that nature of God that is spiritual. You cannot see, but now God is here. We can see him physically. They were really pissed off. And that brought the whole problem. So after Jesus' death and resurrection, we have a different way of talking about this thing. And we realize now the gospel took a different turn. And the persecution when it began, it went on and on and on until a particular time when now we were to be brought for the gospel. I'm cutting that area short. So one of the differences that is brought in church is a factored thing from the point of the doctrinal differences. We all recognize the factor which propels the action, including COVID-19, as well as the path onto internal glory of our founder, the general overseer of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. <laughs> Prophets, the Mitope, Balogun Joshua, the man in the synagogue, Through the experience of what happened thereafter, we honor our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Continuous gratitude and appreciation. And so I want us to put our hands together. Let's give God a big round of applause. Let Doctrinal differences. Number two is now the governmental divide and rule. Governmental divide and rule. Now, governmental divide and rule is one method that we really have in a different form. Governmental divide and rule is one way of dealing with people who are united. Well, I can't take it to group it in uh, uh, sin form 
or rather group it in a form of a, a religious form. Because I can remember in Genesis we had a different form. When the Tower of Babel was building, when the Tower of Babel was building, it reached a moment when God in heaven, Bible explains to us this point that God in heaven, had this intention of man to build a tall tower. In fact, that was the intention of man, building a tall tower to heaven. So God looked at their intentions and he said, oh, you are building a tower to, to heaven. <laughs> okay, you are building a tower to heaven uh, against my plan. Eh? You spread, multiply and fill the earth. So you want to build one tower, one space, up to heaven no he can't work and then god brought confusion and this confusion under the sun god got confusion and this was the place where many languages were born and many languages were brought in forward and we later on in the books of the new testament especially the apostles episodes in the beginning episodes and the ending part of the the books of uh, the books of gospel those four groups and Acts Romans and you see those books they're talking about when there was a time when the disciples were in the upper room and it was Pentecostal so they prepared to go to the stadium where the ceremony of Pentecostal ceremony was having some taking place now one thing that happened in such an, uh, 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 an area was that um, they started busting in different tongues without a lesson or classroom taught, without people talking to them in any way saying, oh, you, Peter, you'll be talking Hebrew, or you, John, you'll be talking Aramaic, or you, Andrew and James, you'll be speaking uh, uh, Greek, or so and so, Bartholomew, or, and uh, the rest. You will be speaking a special, a special language or somebody or you levy you'll be speaking luke you'll be speaking this john you'll be speaking in kikuyu or so and so you'll be speaking in yoruba or so you'll be hausa speaking or so and so you'll be speaking in the belly and uh, so and so the disciples were there so they spoke in different languages and now i will be talking about one time about tongues speaking in tongues in one form or another now i realized that that is another di division that came in but it was not this particular one was not a governmental but the other one was a governmental uh, reference too in one way that we have to classify these people we have to classify who are these people talking about jesus christ and following him Bef after jesus dies now they still carry on the business of jesus christ who are these people and then they give them a name christians to separate their identity their identity from the others so that when they see them they say these are the christians and they can kill them when necessary, uh, when they needed. So that division came in in the body of Christ. I'm going to talk about the division of the Church of Christ today. So there is also another part of the governmental division where you now gather. So later on in the church history, if you do theology, there's one subject called church history. Now, when you read to another, I'm cutting the story short, when you read to a certain place, you will discover the government now had to get into any gathering. And they say, if you want to gather here, we need your permit, a permit, we need your registration, we need your name, we want to know who you are, so you have to register with us in the government. Every government, that is. And the Roman government started doing that, and it came and flopped over up to now. In East Africa, you have, there is a registry in the society. South Africa, the same. And as I'm talking, there are adjusted re regulations for church in South Africa right now. There are some other things you can do now as a minister of the gospel. In fact, there is a serious adjustment of regulations of society rules, especially to regulate church and to regulate people of religious beliefs, uh, religious faith. The belief system is definite, definitely changed in different approach or different life patterns. Now, in Nigeria, the same. In Kenya, the same. Now, 
In fact, this is what is making now the church to wake up and elect people who are God-fearing so that they can tame this regulation in a way you can find. Now, what is the vision? definition. Now, division is exactly the act of disagreement and the act of accepting the disagreement. This is the simplest way I can explain this. Disagreement and that act of accepting that disagreement as a legal factor in the association of any type. Now, I want you people to understand this, that division is here to stay in church. Number three, I'm talking about division in church. The factors, selfish interests. Now I'm coming closer to what we really need to deal with. Selfish interests. Now selfish interests now, uh, comes in that uh, a person is anointed more than the other. Now another person also perceives I'm more anointed than the other. Another pastor, another prophet, another evangelist, apostle, comes in and say no we were more learned than the others another people also come in and they say oh we are more organized than others you see now even in church today you find a church that is very vibrant they now come out and say no we we have the numbers and the others come in and say no we we don't have the numbers but we have the wits and we have the holy spirit so if you are 20 we are far better on and then they now come in to justify what the differences are well playing in the public and it brings more division and everything i'll give one example in scorn scorn uh, uh, has been on top in many ways if you see the way they are organized you can realize there is something in them and then other pastors, you, say, you find other pastors, bishops, apostles in Nigeria. They now rose against Kwan and Bishop T.B. Joshua, Prophet T.B. Joshua. And now they have risen, some of them, and the disciples also, some of them, risen against now Prophetess Evelyn Joshua because of the way and the excellence they are doing things. Now in Kenya, we also have some other pastors, I won't mention the name, quite a number now we've got pastor ezekiel or oh, lately you had him they also arose and say he is a cult i told you when we were in the stadium in the kasarani stadium doing one of the major crusades that was there so he rose up and i know from the point they were fighting the one that was saying he is a spiritual father i definitely that was his war so he could walk and he could talk, he could say this, he could speak that and speak this and speak that. And they say this is a cult. When you hear who are speaking, they are the same people who are in the gospel themselves. And they speak about that and they say these are the latter days, I mean the end time church. Now they are not talking about the latter days, they are talking about the end time church. The latter day there will be more glory. I want us to get this one difference. The latter, days, the latter days, there will be more dispensation and more signs and works. It is written in the Bible. But there are also other people that believe in the end time. They don't believe in the latter days. They now believe in the end time there will be false prophets. I can't deny it is true. But then, what are we seeing and how do we judge what we see? Hallelujah. We now see problems of different kinds, and there are different things we can see and we set in. Give thanks to him, give thanks to him, give thanks to him. All glory, honor, and adoration to his name forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seat. Our reason for giving thanks for all the way long and today's presence of grace. Between last year, 2021, and today, our story has been one of success and progress in all dimensions. We have kept moving from one level to the other in our spiritual journey. Having the Holy Spirit as our chief driver 
He has always provided the needed confidence and strength of spirit for the leadership of the ministry in all ways. One of the initial steps we have taken as a church is to honor our elderly ones who have stood firmly as pillar upon with the scorn rest. We have supported our Old Testament members with cash gift, as well as clothes and umbrellas. We equally extend charity to the needy Orphans, widows, and widowers outside the church by distributing food items, a tradition which began with our general overseer, Prophet T.B. Joshua, through the giving ministry. <clears throat> Within this year, 2022, we have held services with earth shaking testimonies from our members and partners viewers all over the world, confirming the ever-presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Let us appreciate God once again. Very many different kinds. We can talk about things. We can talk about calamities in church. When something happens to people who are prospering, you find there are some point of jealousy also playing. And this point of jealousy playing in every category, in any society, in any form, makes the division very wide open. Wide open. And jealousy plays loud. So the devil takes advantage of the jealousy of other people who are not making it to start now gathering and fight the people who are God's servants and God is using them. Now, that's exactly what we have. We can speak and speak and speak evil about people who are making it genuinely. It has been a problem ever since. And then we can see people talking about people who are doing well. On the grounds of God is making it work for them. And now they quote scriptures. That is the only bad part of it because they also quote scriptures to justify what they believe in. These people, we are fighting them because of X, Y, Z. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Who is who in the body of Christ? Judge not so that you may not be judged. Now, I know there is a part of uh, uh, theological studies called apologetics. Apologetics is coming to correction, the faulty gospel, correcting the wrong in the body of Christ. It's called the apologetics, the uncompromised gospel. It is a very good part of it. If we can do that one. Even me, I can do the apologetics very well. You pick a man that has no understanding of God and then correct in love of Christ Jesus so that some people may follow the right division, uh, the right time. But anytime it is done in a wrong way, you will discover this is a wrong way of uh, making correction. It becomes a division, an agent of division. Immediately, it becomes an agent of division. And that's exactly the problem. Now, what we are talking about in the body, the causes, uh, things that causes the body of, of Christ to be divided, personalities, you cannot avoid mentioning people. Because there are specific people. Like you see the movement that came up from South Africa, they call the anti-prophet movement, anti-prophetic movement. You, you had it, right? Yes. Some people were drawn in within the apologetics level, correctly positioned to talk about the evil that is happening in the body of Christ, of which it was very genuinely uh, positioned and very much in time. But there are some people who also wanted to make a move out of it. In fact, bloggers came out, so some bloggers came out and were talking about the wrong side of the correction. Some of them up to now, they are mocking God using the apologetics. But there are some, I know I can mention channels, that are really using it for correct reasons. Making sure 
they correct the body of Christ. Even some pastors we know in the body of Christ, God has called them into the apologetics and they can preach no nonsense gospel. They don't preach <laughs> prosperity, of which they also believe in, they prosper. They do what is needed to prosper in ministry or prosper financially. But when they come for correctional, aspect of the gospel you will find out that they really have correction on gospel and they really can correct many things in the body of christ but some of them they are coming with evil intentions of which the motive also is very important if you want to do the correction what is your motive towards the correction you want to do what is your motive What's your motive? It's also very important to ask that question. People from all over the world who have close relationship with our Father in the Lord, Prophet TB Joshua, over the years. We started my TBJ moment on Emmanuel TV. Our prophet was a man of the people, and he interacted, when physically here, with common people, political leaders, statesmen, religious leaders, industrialists, business personalities, and media executives, among others. Each person has a beautiful story to tell on such encounter through which they are blessed. This program is universally acknowledged for its freshness and insightful relevance. Now, another thing that causes division, as I'm talking about these points, you also go to the comment section. Please participate in this. I would love to hear from you in the comment section and see, tell us what you think about the vision in the church today and the vision in the body of Christ today. What causes it? and why and uh, the results are not really good and uh, what you anticipate are the remedies of the same what can the church do and keeping on and on now the thing is the belief system people also have beliefs of different kind and people also have faith at different level so the faith and uh, this one will force me to talk about speaking in tongues as well and uh, you know, we have different people believing in different speech in tongues. There are tongues of the devil as well. There are tongues of God's spirit as well. Now, speaking in tongues in the spiritual belief comes in when we are talking about talking in uh, mysterious languages. And I can tell you, the deeper somebody gets in a relationship with God, the deeper the tongues. Have you realized uh, speaking in tongues is different? People speak in different tongues, different places, different tongues, different levels of faith. When someone understands deeper in the spirit and sinks deeper in the spirit, the languages change. And this is where so many people don't understand. The people who are lower in the understanding of the things of the spirit may not understand that when someone that has a deeper understanding of the things of the spirit starts speaking, they speak in different tongues in any other way. And I want us to talk about this in a form of appreciation. That when you can speak in tongues, you have to understand how to interpret it. Paul was speaking and saying, for those who speak in tongues and there is no translator, let everybody sit down. Because speaking in tongues for the education of an individual, an individual spiritual life. But then there is a time when you have to speak in tongues when you are in church. You can speak in tongues anywhere. You can speak in tongues in different forms. You can speak in tongues in different ways. Now, what takes me here is because the understanding of the belief system of speaking in tongues, people have demonized it. It is part of doctrinal, uh, uh, it's part of the doctrinal uh, byproduct 
doctrinal understanding. But doctrinal understanding, the difference within here, doctrinal understanding is a lot more concentrated on, 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 on formulation of constitutional belief. But in this area of spiritual speaking in tongue is uh, the empowerment and the understanding of the consecration of a Christian. Faith, body, and everything that pertains it. So the Bible speaks clearly about this. I know somebody will be like, oh, why don't you read the Bible? Why don't you do this? I have my Bible here. I have two Bibles. I have another uh, three versions in my phone. In my tablet also I have here another, uh, another version, like two other extra versions. So reading them, I was in fact reading this uh, before I came on to do uh, uh, this, uh, this, this video. So I really want all of us to get into the same page when it comes to issues of speaking in tongues. I have heard uh, Prophet T.B. Joshua talking about speaking in tongues. I also have some bishops in Kenya and in East Africa speaking in tongues. Personally, there was a time in, uh, in our service we entirely came to speak in tongues. Yes, in an overnight meeting. We spoke in tongues for almost four hours. Then after that is when we started now taking prayer points from different angles. And I would not lie to you. We had a lot of prayer points after speaking for us because we didn't even finish the prayer sessions. <laughs> it was a night vigil. We didn't even finish the prayer sessions because when we were about to finish, more prayer points were coming. So we were loaded with real spirit of intercession and spirit of understanding to us what to pray for by that time. Now, speaking in tongues is also part of the doctrinal uh, affiliations of the higher side of a a spiritual doctrinal operations that we really need to understand. Any time we talk about God and we talk about the study of God's insinuation. The body of a human being is born and is partaken and is packaged into three. The spirit, soul and the body. And all these things have to be nourished. So much of it, nourishing your flesh, nourishing your soul, and nourishing your spirit is very important, all of them. That by nourishing your soul, you power your understanding and the knowledge of Christ. And by nourishing your body, this one, you power your physique so that you can carry the understanding of God to a specific place, let me say evangelism, to church service. Right now you are watching me. You are using either your computer or your uh, screen or you are using your television set or you are even using a phone right now. You are using your intellectual soul to assess this information and uh, you carried yourself to the place you carried that gadget you are using now. It's a body that has been empowered. And now the part that is very important is nourishing your spirit. And when you nourish correctly your spirit, that's when now you start knowing that there is a difference between just a carnal man and a, an empowered man. Of his mercy. You talk of God's favor and his love. Today is another day to celebrate. As you have all gathered here, and this first Thanksgiving service in commemoration of the reopening of our ministry. After one year of future called on the 5th of December, 2021, we all recognize the factor which propels the action including COVID-19, as well as the past onto internal glory of A carnal man thinks things of the flesh and things of the world. And things of the world does not mean they cannot be used in the kingdom. 
But things of this world, as much as we apply it in this context, it is because you are using the knowledge of this world to perpetrate or to come against the work and the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking here and said, I subdue every knowledge and every sight and every thinking that is rising against the knowledge of Christ. We subdue it in the name of Jesus Christ. And Paul was saying, the soul that is corrupted has a part that will be dealing against the body of Christ. And that's what causes some part of division that we have. Now, maturity is another factor. Mature people have sense. Young people have nothing to offer as much as understanding is concerned. And we come back still in the episodes, the book of episodes. We are talking for fall. Paul is saying that now, when I was a baby, I talked like a baby. I spoke like a baby. I did things like a baby. But for I am now matured, an adult. I do things of an adult, I speak like an adult, I do <laughs> operate like an adult. Now, this is one other thing. There are people who are mature in age, but they are not mature in their understanding. It's also a hazard in the body of Christ. We find even pastors, they, we, they, 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 they are pastors have different maturity level. There are those that are matured and those pe that are not matured at all. I mean, they are nowhere near maturity. And uh, this is what causes the body of Christ. In fact, if you see the prophetic ministries, you can see the major difference between why people don't really like the prophetic ministries. It's because there are young ministers, the prophets, that are genuinely, honestly speaking, they are genuinely off the track. You see what they speak, you hear what they speak. Now, how do we call those prophets that kept on prophesying to Squan that the Squan ministry should become a museum? How about those prophets that came in and be saying, oh, T.B. Joshua died, now Squan should close? How, how do we talk about them? Is it a misunderstanding of immaturity? Definitely, they had their own intentions to partake of. And in this one, I can directly tell you that when it comes to such levels, you have a very big part to play. And that part is, you stand in the gap of truth and worship. What we've been doing, when the time we started doing these episodes of uh, uh, analytics, people came in and be saying, oh, who is this one? Doing this, doing that, doing the other thing, doing the other thing. And we took up our time and I will be answering some few in episode form. And I realized one thing that most of the people that came to start criticizing what we were doing, they are the same immature people that were on the other side trying to spoil the work of mature Christians like Mama Evelyn that was working nights and days. for all the way long and today's presence of grace. Between last year, 2021 and today, our story has been one of success and progress in all dimensions. We have kept moving from one level to the other in our spiritual journey. Having the Holy Spirit as our chief driver he has always provided the needed confidence and strength of spirit for the leadership of the ministry in all ways. One of the initial steps we have taken as a church is to honor our elderly ones who have stood firmly as pillar upon with the scorn rest. We have supported our Old Testament members with cash gift, as well as clothes and umbrellas. We equally extend charity to the needy, orphans, widows and widowers outside the church by distributing food items 
a tradition which began with our general overseer, Prophet T.B. Joshua, through the giving ministry. <laughs> Within this year, 2022, we have held services with earth shaking testimonies from our members and partners, viewers all over the world, confirming the ever presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Let us appreciate God once again. Let's give thanks, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In order to give platform to diverse people from all over the world who have close relationship with our Father in the Lord, Prophet T.B. Joshua, over the years, we started my TVJ moment on Emmanuel TV. Our prophet was a man of the people and he interacted when physically here with common people, political leaders, statemen, religious leaders, industrialists, business personalities, and media executives, among others. Each person has a beautiful story to tell on such encounter through which they are blessed. This program is universally acknowledged for its freshness and insightful relevance. One of the principal projects we have done within the year was first Quan coordinators meeting, which was held between 6th and 7th of September. It was organized to achieve effective management of our partners, especially in countries all over the world. Through simplifying operational strategies, we acknowledge God Almighty for this successful event which brought a great number of our coordinators to the ministry from all over the world. <clears throat> On August 26, the name of God was greatly honored as the ministry, through the direction of the Holy Spirit, organized its Quan outreach in South Africa with massive testimonies of deliverances and healings visited on that land and from which people from neighboring countries benefited immensely. The event was a testimony to what God has always done in our ministry, as we have seen in such other places, like South Korea, Botswana, Mexico, Peru, Dominican Republic, Paraguay, Nazareth, Australia, just to mention a few. <clears throat> On September 30th, we equally had our living water service in the church, the first under the new leadership. Thousands of people were in the church to enjoy the blessings, breakthrough, and touch of glory as diseases, affliction, curses, stagnation, and other medical tribulations and spiritual hindrances gave way through the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. And I wish to announce to the ministry and to all of us who are here that that is just the beginning. To stand to make the work that was left stand firm. And up to now, we have a testimony and people have a testimony of different kind. Now, we have these kind of things, even in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Uganda, major East African countries. Now we have Ethiopia. Ethiopia is also an Eastern African country. I know if you don't know that, Ethiopia is an Eastern African country, is the Eastern region of Africa. And there are also prophets here. There are also men of God that stands in this place and we be criticizing the genuine prophets, criticizing the men of God that have genuinely stood in time to say God has done it in their capacities.
I want to tell you God has done a lot in this other part. Now go to the comment section and talk to me. What do you understand about the division in the church? And otherwise we will talk about this, especially if you have a scenario that is near you like now in Nigeria, like Squan and other disciples that will be there. Or in South Africa and the war against prophets and the war against worship. We want to make it a broad, a broad discussion, a broad forum and uh, make it work. In Malawi, we are prophets there and some things are happening. Now in Kenya, we will also, I also want to mix up some other episode from Kenya and we will do so much about it. And uh, uh, I'm also uh, hoping you will be ready uh, to receive this. I want to also to accept that uh, times and seasons are different and that can dictate the difference of how people think or how people see things and the ideology of different generations taking and changing hands. And it is very important that we need to understand this in a different way. So we get this point and place it in a place where God can set up the differences to be a stepping stone for a big, big breakthrough for the body of Christ in general. We are living at the end time, but it's still the latter days that Jesus came in and was saying that whatever happens, the latter days shall hold more glory for the church. It doesn't matter whether there will be persecution, but the anointing will increase. If the devil comes in like flood, God will raise up the standard of the church. The ministry forever. We also have every reason to praise the name of God Almighty for his provisions which made it possible for us as a ministry to organize charity for Ukraine, whose people are facing grave danger of hunger, starvation, helplessness, and other social economic tribulations, and also in Spain for the earthquake victims. The manual school in Pakistan is not left out. We have rebuilt the school which was totally destroyed due to devastating flood. <laughs> Equally in Nigeria, there was a flood crisis which tore through many states. The flood victims have also experienced terrible moments of displacement, hunger. Our ministry has since visited some states with food and other support items through our partners. Through the Prophet T.B. Joshua Foundation, we are striving to preserve the legacies of our founder, including Arigidi, his birthplace, which also put in, in place some physical structures to give a first lift to the ministry in its entirety. <clears throat> we are profoundly committed to further empowering the Manuel TV, our official channel, to reach out to every part of the world. We are also dutifully strengthening our various departments to create forum for excellence and progressive administration. I am Timothy Profitable and this is Blevoy. We handle your spirituality, economic and social matters. See you in the next episode, God willing, and pass my greetings to your family and everybody that esteems the grace upon you. Amen.